Cut and Wrap is an add-on I created to turn any PNG leaves, decals, logos, whatever, into a perfectly trimmed cutout with clean quad topology in just one click. What used to take hours of tedious hand modeling can now be done instantly. Since the created cutouts has perfectly quad topology, it bends very well with the modifiers like Simple Deform. This add-in will be available in Superhive Market, which if formerly Blender Market, Gumroad, Fab, CG Trader, and My Art Station. Link will be in the description. Feel free to check it out. I was creating nature assets, plants, trees, and grasses for the upcoming updates to my Make Forest and Grovescape Forest generators. I felt frustrated by having to cut out leaves by hand. It took too much time and was boring. To make things easier, I created a tool that automates the entire cutout process and make my life easier. A single click and a few simple settings are all it takes. I also added a shrink wrap feature that conforms cutouts to almost any surface with more flexibility than Blender's standard shrink wrap. Now let's see how to use the add-on. I'll explain every features in detail, but now let's see how can we create a cutout quickly. Let's install the add-in first, go to Edit, Preferences, and choose the folder you downloaded the add-in. I have created two versions of the add-in. One is Cut and Wrap, and another one is Cut and Wrap Mini, the full version will have all the features that I explain in this video, and the mini version will not have the shrink wrap and bulk cutout feature, other than that everything is going to be same. Now choose the add-in, and click install from disk. Save the preferences. Open the end panel, and the add-in will be available there. Let's select a PNG from the folder. Let's change the mask offset to something like 15, change the subdivision to 5, set the origin to bottom of the cutout, Select Remove Unwanted Faces, click on Generate Cutout. Here you go. Your cutout is created and that's how simple the add-on is to use. Now let's see the features one by one in detail. The folder mode lets you select the PNGs in bulk. You can select a folder full of PNGs and create cutout for all the PNGs inside that folder. There is no limitations. But one thing to consider is, if you have a lot of PNG, as it will take more time to create the cutout, you can see the progress in the progress bar below. The mask offset is distance between the cutout outline and the image. As you see the first image is with a mask offset of 0 and the second image is with mask offset of 100. More the mask offset is, more the space between the outline and the image. Keep faces inside holes is an option to delete the faces inside the image's alpha mask. For the first image it is turned on, so the faces between the arms are not deleted. And for the second image it is turned off and so the faces between the arms are deleted. Subdivisions plays a major role in the shape of the cutout. With lower subdivision like 5, you will get a low poly, less detailed cutout, and with higher subdivisions like 100, you will get a dense, high poly cutout. With higher subdivisions you can get the exact silhouette of the image, on the other hand the cutout will be more dense. When separate island is turned off, it will consider the whole image as a single island and create only one cutout. For example, this image has different element like hearts and different words but it is generated as a single cutout, and if you turn on the separate island option, it will create cutouts for each of the elements that doesn't touch the other island. This option is very helpful for creating the nature assets like leaves. If the image has more than one leaf in it, it will create a separate cutouts for each leaves. You can have the origin either at the center of the cutout or at the bottom without having to manually moving the origin. Again, this option will be helpful. If you are creating leaves, Having origin at bottom will help you distribute the leaves with geometry nodes. Turning on keep only outline option will remove all the faces inside the cutout and preserve only the outline. This can help your RAM a little bit in saving its memory. But one thing to keep in mind is, this does not help reduce your render time. One thing you might have noticed throughout this video is, outline of the cutouts are very jagged and are uneven. This is because of how the add-in works. This can be easily corrected. And here comes the smoothing option. There are two types of smoothing, each has its own plus and minuses. Normal smoothing works very well with all the cutouts. It works same on all the cutouts with lower and higher subdivisions. On the negative side, it squeezes the cutout a little bit. On the other hand, Laplacian smoothing does not squeeze the outline. In fact, it gives you more smoother results with higher subdivision cutouts. But sometimes it can give you some weird stretching artifacts. We have covered all the feature of the cutout. Now. Let's move on to part 2 of the add-on, the shrink wrap feature. I created a custom shrink wrap tool with extra options you that you won't find in Blender's standard shrink wrap. Let's enable use shrink wrap, and place on target face will help you place the cutout on the selected face, 
Now let's select the target object that you want to shrink wrap to. You can either use the eyedropper or click on the drop down to select the object. Pick face option is used to select the exact place where you want to place the cutout. Yes, I said exact place. It remembers the exact spot you clicked and will add the cutout on that place. Look at the cursor. Second time I use the top face of the cube, and the cutout is created on that exact spot. Now let's use the bulk cutout option. Let's select the folder with images. It doesn't have to be PNG. It can be JPEG or any other image format. If it is not PNG, it will only subdivide the image and send it to the shrink wrap and works same as other cutouts. One thing to keep in mind is, while using the shrink wrap, you should not use the place next to each other because it may cause some problem. You have to set the placement to all at the origin. Now let's turn on the distribute randomly. Use shrink wrap. Place on target face options as we did earlier. Now the place on target face does not work like it did for the single cutout. It is only used to select the target object. Since we selected distribute randomly, it will distribute the cutout on all the places. You can use different wrapping methods and snap modes. But I found the default normal project with above surface options works very well on all types of meshes. Once the cutouts are generated, you can set the random scale of the cutouts and click on Randomize Selected Scale. Make sure all the cutouts that you want to randomly scale to be selected. This random scale option works without the shrink wrap as well, means it works on the normal cutouts. What's the difference between normal shrink wrap and cut and wrap shrink wrap? With the normal shrink wrap, when you try to move the cutout, you can see the cutout is squeezing and stretching. No matter if I change the wrap method, it always squeeze and stretch. On the other hand, cut and wrap has an option called slide cutout. When you try to move the cutout with that option, you can see it is moving perfectly based on the normal of the object. And one more thing is, with normal shrink wrap, you can only move the cutout. But with the slide cutout, you can move the cutout. At the same time, you can pan around in the viewport. This makes it easier to place the cutout wherever you want on the mesh. You can select the cutouts and randomly rotate them. They will rotate around the origin maintaining its normal position. You can also randomly scale them. These two options work only with the selected cutouts. You have to select all the cutouts you want to rotate or scale. With offset, you can offset the distance between cutout and the object, just like the normal shrink wrap. You can also select the individual cutout and adjust the offset in the modifiers panel. You can also subdivide or edit the cutout like a normal object. One more option that I forgot to mention is, you can choose the faces to avoid cutouts based on the axis, if you want. In the add-in panel, you can see an option called Choose Directions. I'm pretty sure it is not correct naming, but in that drop-down you will see options to include or exclude the direction to avoid. If you uncheck the axis, it will not create cutouts in that axis. If you choose only a particular axis, in this case, I have unchecked all the axis except positive Y axis, it will only create and shrink wrap the cutouts to faces that are facing selected direction. I was really excited to see how far I could push this add-on, so I decided to test how many images it could handle and how many cutouts it could create at once. I loaded more than 400 images into a folder and tried to generate the cutouts. To my surprise, it created the cutouts for all those images. And all the shrink wrap and other features were working perfectly. It took exactly 10 minutes and 21 seconds to create all those cutouts. Here I fast forwarded the video. Look at how perfectly the slide option aligns the cutout to the mesh. It took me approximately 13 minutes to complete cutting out these five leaves. With the cut and wrap, it took me few clicks and few seconds. Finally, if you are someone like me who hates hand modeling these kind of things, and if this is what you are looking for, this add-in will be available in Superhive Market, which if formerly Blender Market, Gumroad, Fab, CG Trader, and My Art Station. Link will be in the description. Feel free to check it out. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel.